Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to talk to you about vulnerability research and management. So as you know, if you manage a, uh, a network system in your organization or your company, one of the things you have to do is to make sure that you stay abreast of the latest vulnerabilities uh, notifications out there. And um, if you have to uh, do some type of compliance or if you want to implement a cybersecurity framework in your organization, let's say the NIST 800-53 or ISO or anything else, part of the cybersecurity program is to have a vulnerability management. So how do you go about doing that, right? Uh, there are many different websites and different uh, resources where you can see the latest vulnerabilities. And we're going to be talking about the most trusted sites out there. By no means they are all uh, exclusive, right? I mean, this is just some of the most uh, trusted sites that you could uh, research for vulnerabilities but you can also rely on your vendors uh, cybersecurity notifications or private companies to uh, manage the cybersecurity for you and notify you of any vulnerabilities uh, out there in the wild so um, the most uh, trusted that we can say at least here in the uh, united states and north america is the national vulnerability database and as you can see here, uh, the National Vulnerability Database is a U.S. government repository of standards vulnerability management. So this um, site is being maintained by the U.S. government, uh, specifically by the NIST Institute. And they um, collect and publish the known vulnerabilities that affect different products from different vendors. Uh, one of the most uh, effective ways to use this website, uh, you would go to the main site, you would go to vulnerabilities, and you could search for uh, vulnerabilities based on keywords. Let's say that I wanna use as a keyword, I wanna use a protocol, FTP, to see what vulnerabilities affect the FTP protocol. Something you have to keep in mind here though, uh, and let me go back to what I said before uh, about the FTP protocol. FTP is just an application, it's a protocol that is used by different uh, applications, right? So when you search for FTP vulnerabilities, you're gonna be searching for the applications that use FTP. So when you come here, as you can see, uh, this is gonna show you uh, vulnerabilities for FTP vulnerabilities from different vendors. Right here, we have Thing Manager on Thing Server. We have a Nucleus Net, all versions. Something to keep in mind is that when you are evaluating vulnerabilities, sometimes they affect uh, certain software versions. For instance, if we come down here to uh, Rockwell Automation Theme Manager, right? This is the application. And the application that is vulnerable is from versions 11 to 13 based on this CVE. Now, it may be that version 14 already has the patches for this vulnerability. So just keep that in mind. The other thing that you have to uh, maybe pay attention to as you are evaluating vulnerabilities is the severity. Not every published vulnerability represents a risk and that's something that you have to, to manage uh, internally within your organization. Something uh, simple that they do is that they do have a severity uh, rating here. For instance, this right here is 9.8 meaning that it's critical, right? Meaning that there are known attacks to it and you have to go there and patch it as soon as you can. If you have this uh, product in your organization, but if you come down here to, for instance, a 4.3, 
of medians, what is the likelihood of uh, this is uh, in progress FTP server of this happening, right? So that's something that you have to keep in mind and decide uh, as an organization or as a network security engineer to what is it that you're going to tackle first, right? So um, that's one of um, the sites. Of course, there's more to it. I would invite you to... Uh, to, to do more research on this if you want to do vulnerabilities on SMB right so you come here and that's going to show you vulnerabilities on the SMB protocol and if you click on it it's going to expand the information on that and you can see uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the resource or of the affected uh, uh, side you're going to left next and I'm just going to click OK and that's going to Give you more information about it. So um, that is um, the uh, that the, the national vulnerability database. Now let's go to another known site, right? So this is the common weakness enumeration, right? And again, similar to the uh, MVD. This is a repository of known vulnerabilities. But this is community-based and community-developed, right? It's not um, like the previous MVD uh, site that we visited that is supported and maintained by the U.S. government. Uh, this is community-based. And it lists uh, vulnerabilities in software, hardware, uh, on box, firmware, so on and so forth. is community-driven. And that's why it makes it so much powerful as well right because it's community driven it doesn't have the bureaucracy that the MD may have of course they do have a process to to uh, to discover and list vulnerabilities uh, but again it's, it's another site that you may want to uh, to visit and check as you could see here it lists the top 25 most dangerous software weaknesses so you can click on that and that's going to take you to uh, to the top 25 vulnerabilities, right? And as you could see here, they're ranking them, uh, uh, and they give you a score. And that's something that you have to maybe take into account as of okay, if, if we are notified of a vulnerability that is a score of 70 or higher, then we have to act upon that right away. So. Um, this is a useful site, uh, especially for uh, software developers or if you are like interested in finding more software related vulnerabilities, you can come here. Then we have this other site. Um, this is the common vulnerability, I forgot what E stands for, exposure, right? I don't know if it's here, common vulnerability exposure. So you would come here, again, uh, the mission of the common vulnerability exposure is to identify, define, and catalog, again, publicly disclosed vulnerabilities. It's similar to the, um, to the common vulnerability weakness enumerations. And as you could see, it's part of the same uh, organization, MITRE.org, uh, supports both uh, lists and researchers for vulnerabilities. And when you come here, so when you come here, you could see uh, the uh, vulnerability tweets. And something to keep in mind, though, notice this, that they're publishing the CVE number or ID for the vulnerability, meaning that the uh, de facto standard that all these uh, vulnerabilities list websites and researchers use uh, goes back to the National Vulnerability Database uh, information, right? That, that's where you find the CVEs, the exposure. So, um, so when you come here, you can go to uh, search CVE list. And again, similar to the others, you could do a search based on protocols, based on keywords. And when you do that, that's going to show you the CVE number. You can click on that and that's going to expand on the vulnerability. Uh, the other one that may be useful to you if you are a uh, Microsoft shop and you want to stay uh, 
abreast of the latest Microsoft vulnerabilities, you can go directly to Microsoft Security Response Center. Uh, this is their website. And then you would go to uh, Customer Guidance and Security Update Guides. And as you could see here, you can search by dates or by vulnerabilities. And this is gonna uh, list uh, different uh, published Microsoft vulnerabilities based on the products that you're using. As you could see here, if you're using Windows Server 2012 or two, there are some critical vulnerabilities that you may want to address. Of course, if you click on that, that's gonna tell you more about the vulnerability. And the cool thing about this site though is that it gives you more information about it. You know, it shows you about the uh, attack vector. It shows you if the vulnerability is can be uh, exploited internally or externally. It's a lot of useful information if you're doing uh, your research. So the attack complexity, so here we come. So you're gonna get a lot of information, especially if you are notified of a vulnerability and you need to write a report or communicate that to management. You could use the information right from here. Uh, another one that I personally use is uh, Cisco Talos Intelligence. Uh, Talos Intelligence is the uh, I'm gonna call it the organization. It's a private company. It's a private service. It's part of Cisco. Cisco bought them years ago. That uh, researches and provides cybersecurity intelligence, right? And if you use Cisco products, for instance, if you use the uh, the IPS, the IDS, if you use Firepower services. Uh, they get the feeds for the latest signatures and for the latest hashes from Cisco Intelligence. So you can come right here and search for, again, uh, vulnerabilities uh, discovered by Cisco. Uh, as you could see, some of the cool things, if you go here to, uh, to Talos Intelligence, is that these are the disclosed vulnerabilities, as you could see here, and they also list uh, some of the zero day uh, reports, uh, you know, those are vulnerabilities that are uh, identified, but they don't have a patch yet, right? Of course, if they don't have a patch, I mean, th these are very uh, difficult to exploit unless you are the one who discover the vulnerability. Uh, but it's good to have uh, to keep uh, an eye on this website and uh, you know it's, it's pretty cool if you if you can come here that's going to show you graphs of where the latest attacks are coming from and um, this is not unique to uh, Talos Intelligence and I believe that Palo Alto and Checkpoint and all these uh, you know cybersecurity companies they do have something similar uh, to this. Um, the other one that you would like to check is the uh, the uh, website, the Cybersecurity and, and Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, CISA, right? And if you come here, you're going to see that they're also listing uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, in this case, you know, it's going to show me as of today, uh, I'm doing this on October the 18th. It has identified... Um, vulnerabilities related to Fortinet and it's going to show you the CVEs down here and you could do some research oh well this is not showing any information so it may be that it is new and it hasn't been updated or it has been fixed or there's some misconfiguration somewhere in here with the API but uh, this is another useful uh, website that you would like to um, to check, they do provide uh, great resources for cybersecurity services and, and know-hows and how to uh, for you to to push out uh, the security uh, solutions within your organization. Um, another one that is an interesting site is the uh, vulnerability database, right? And let me go back to home. 
uh, this site is a good site, but you know it, it does not perform that well. It's kind of a slow. I don't even know where this site is hosted. Uh, but they do have a database of uh, vulnerabilities and and attacks uh, attacks and attack vectors, right? Uh, you could search this based on you know like the other sites, like what are the latest vulnerabilities, the uh, the, the one that the, the ones that are more critical uh, and all that. But an interesting thing that you want to uh, look into is that they do offer um, they do offer uh, exploits uh, that you can uh, purchase. Uh, you know, now this site is kind of a slow, right? So um, if you create a, an account, uh, you have to create an account to access some sections of the site. Creating the account is free, but then they do have different tiers that you can move up, right? And once you do it, you can go ahead and buy exploits for different vulnerabilities. Um, I have never done this, but it's just interesting to know that it's there. Uh, this is something that, that works. I have heard of people and systems using this not for malicious purposes, but for research purposes. But um, you could do it, right? So it tells you right here how much these exploit cost between what, $25,000 and $50,000. And if you got that kind of money, uh, then you could, you know, maybe go there and give it a try. Uh, I don't know, you know, how you would pay for that, maybe with crypto or something. But um, again, these are some of the uh, common websites for you to evaluate vulnerabilities. But the big question is, why would you do that, right? Like, why would you say, okay, let me check the latest vulnerabilities? Um, there are many reasons, and I said that at the beginning. Uh, one of the most um, uh, strong reasons is if you have to have a cybersecurity plan within your your organization for compliance purposes, this is part of your job, right? And obviously, you don't want to do this like coming in here every single day or a couple of times a week, like searching for vulnerabilities. What you can do is subscribe and you'll get notifications when vulnerabilities are identified and they send a notification to your email. Or if you are doing a, an assessment, a network cybersecurity assessment of your organization and you see, for instance, that they have a, um, a Windows Server 2012, you know that it's an old system and then you want to explore if there are known vulnerabilities to it you can come here and <clears throat> and search specifically for that system or that protocol so that is part of best practice staying um, up to date with what's happening out there or for instance if you're at a fortinet uh, shop you want to make sure that you stay um up to date with the latest vulnerabilities. But again, it all comes into play because, you know, if you are forwarding at Cisco and you are subscribed to their notifications, they will let you know whenever uh, there is a discovered vulnerabilities. So um, again, this is just informational. It's, it's something that you could use within your um, patch policies or information security policies to make sure that uh, your your organization is notified of, of vulnerabilities so you can have a plan of action to address them based on the uh, uh, risk category that they are. So I hope this video was useful to you. And as always, if you found this information uh, useful, please click on the like button and I'll talk to you later on the next video. Bye.